the matter, Sam? It's Freddy. What, did he get the mouse? Freddy's dead. <laughs> Freddy's dead? That's what I said. <laughs> he had that mouse cornered out on the balcony. Went for him, mouse did a Jerry Rice move. <laughs> Man, Freddy went over the balcony like Bob Doe. I guess that's one time that fourth leg would have really come in handy, huh? Yeah, well, I gotta go tell my mother. She gonna be mad. She love that cat more than me. Love animals, hate people. Okay, Mouse. Thank you all that now, don't you? Just cause you took out some little cat. I'll be somewhere bragging to your little player carrying posse right now. <laughs> That's all right. You mine. That's the door. I'll handle it. <laughs> Romeo, what are you doing here? Hey, Mr. Hightower, I did what you told me. I finally stood up to my pops, and I told him I'm putting myself back in college prep. Oh, yeah, what happened? Said I could do whatever I wanted. Well, that's great. As long as I'm not living under his roof, so, uh, guess I'm gonna have to stay here. <laughs> See, Romeo, first sad moved in. Then I got a mouse. Now, unless you got a pregnant wife on a donkey, the end is full. Hey, I can't believe you called my parents, Mr. Hightower. You were the one that told me to stand up to my pops in the first place. Yeah, over at your house. <laughs> I thought you had my back, man. Romeo, I'm your teacher. I can't come between you and your family. Is Romeo here? There he is. Oh, shh. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want you all to take this the wrong way, but I, I don't really want you people in my house. Man, how y'all know I was over here anyway? What are you talking about? You told me you were going to be staying here for a while. Oh, oh, really? Why didn't you tell me? That way I could have got you some sleeping bags, ordered the Cartoon Channel, and all y'all could have moved in. You would do that, Mr. Hightower? I'm impressed. Yeah, that's a very cool move, Mr. Hightower. Before y'all start naming y'all kids after him, he made me call my parents. Ugh. You dropped a dime on a brother and got the nerve to be acting all down? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, Romeo. No matter what, I'll stand behind you. With my luck, this is probably the boy from the third period that licks the window. <laughs> Hi, I'm Romeo's father. My wife had paged me to pick him up here. Hey, Mr. Santana, pleased to meet you. Come on in. Hola, Mr. Santana. Come on, that's over here. We were just leaving. Romeo, we got your back tomorrow. <laughs> okay, come on, you. Let's go. Vámonos. I ain't going nowhere. Mira, yo soy tu papá, so you better think about what you are saying. I'm in no mood for this today. Romeo, you need to listen to your father. You wait in the cab. All right, all right, cool. Y'all want me to leave? Say no more. Oh, thanks a lot, Mr. Hightower. Appreciate it. Thank you for backing me up, Mr. Hightower. Well, I don't really back you up on this. Say what? You know, you got a great kid there. You ought to try listening to him sometimes. Oh, is that so? Well, tell me something, Mr. Hightower. How many kids you got? I got about 200 of them. And out of those 200, a few of them are pretty special. Romeo happens to be one of those. He just needs another shot. Oh, yeah? And what if he blows it? Are you going to be around to pick up the pieces when uh, things fall apart? Mr. Hightower, you are his teacher for a few years. I'm his father for life. Hey, Mr. Santana. Look, I know you're Romeo's father, but I happen to care about him, too. I just think you're making a really, really big mistake. Oh, well, you're entitled to your opinion. And by the way, I never liked your music. <laughs> just because you drive a cab and your boy can't spell, don't get mad at me. 